Texas, what they could be going forward is not just a Big 12 champion. They could be a college football playoff contender. And some people thought this was the case before the year. But if you think this, it's probably based on what they have offensively and what makes it go offensively. So that's kind of the question. What makes this whole system go for Steve Sarkeesian? Why, why were they so dynamic against Alabama? Because you were watching that game, same as me, and Alabama just looked unsaben like They were having trouble getting lined up. They were having trouble being balanced defensively. Like they just, they did not look the way you expect the Bama defense to look. Some of that's on Bama. I think a lot of that is credit to Steve Sarkeesian and what he drew up. Steve Sarkeesian, in my mind, is a tier one offensive mind in college football. Period. Mic drop the end. So how do they get this done? We'll talk about it right now. Make sure you're subscribed right here to the On3 YouTube channel. The Hard Count Live now. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, 11 a.m. Eastern. Make sure you're dialed in here. We want you a part of this. We appreciate you in advance for that. So one thing that, that Texas did really effectively against Alabama, they utilized movement pre-snap consistently. And one thing that they did first play of the game, they had a, a crazy shift. They brought Xavier Worthy from one side of the formation to the other. They put, Xavier, uh, they, they put Cedric Baxter out to the receiver position out wide, and it was just like a, a wild picture to look at defensively going from what they were pre-snap to before the snap with uh, after the, the motion, after the shift. And the reason why that was so interesting, the reason why that was so effective against Alabama, whenever you shift as an offense, and especially the way that Texas shifted as an offense with those skilled players lining up all over the field, it's like when you're playing basketball at the YMCA and it's a fast break, at that point in time, who you were playing man-to-man -man with before doesn't matter as much. It's like, hey, we, we got to figure this thing out quick because they're about to try and press us for a bucket. They're about to snap the football. We better make sure we're dialed in and we know where we're about to be at. We better make sure we know who we have. And that's exactly what happened for Alabama that first play. They were not lined up right to the trip side. Threw it out to Cedric Baxter. First down for Texas. Like that was kind of the way that things went. So for Texas, that's something you, you can expect from them going forward. Because it puts pressure on a defense to communicate more before the snap. If you got to talk about something as a defense, if you have to kind of get aligned on something and just kind of have a check with me moment, advantage us every single time on the offensive side of the ball. Also, Alabama has good players. Like, yes, the matchup favored Texas for the most part throughout the course of how that game went, but it wasn't because Alabama has bad players in the secondary. Kool-Aid McKinstry is going to be probably a top 10 pick in the NFL draft when it comes time for him to be drafted. It wasn't a matter of personnel versus personnel, and that was why they won. That was a big factor, but Bama had good players. They just couldn't get matched up right. So credit Steve Sarkeesian, credit Quinn Ewers, credit that entire offensive approach. Now, the other thing they did offensively to really uh, take advantage of things in this game, they really utilized the tempo, did Texas, consistently throughout this one. And it was a lot of get a first down, we're right up to the line, we're snapping the football, we're not giving you a chance to breathe. And what that does is a couple of things when you go no huddle like Texas did in this game and how they're going to go the rest of the way. When we go no huddle as an offense, the rules state you cannot sub any players unless we sub players as an offense. So what does that do? If you got some big boys on the field, sorry, you can't go get water or oxygen. You have to stay on the field and keep playing snaps until you call a timeout or until we decide we want to slow things down a little bit. So that's why you see so frequently, hey, big shot play from the offense, get up to the line, hurry, 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 run play. Why? Because that, that defensive line just had to run the length of the field, get lined up, and now they're exhausted. And that's what we saw Texas do a lot of the time. Also, if we have a matchup we like, if we get Xavier Worthy on a safety or, or we get Adonai Mitchell on a DB that we feel good about, we can keep that matchup by going quick. We saw something we like, hey, we're not letting you adjust. We're not letting you figure out what we like against you. We're going to go fast, and we're going to make sure that we get what we want offensively. The matchups we like, we get to keep when we go fast. And we saw Texas do that multiple times and have big plays because of their tempo. And the biggest thing probably, in addition to all of these, it is very difficult for a defense to disguise themselves when you go hurry up. Like, think, think, think about it this way. When you're late getting somewhere, you wake up late for work, or you are late getting to a dinner party, whatever it is, you don't have time to change clothes. You don't have time to look nice and look presentable and really kind of get yourself situated. Like, you got to just show up. You got to be there. You got you to gotta hurry. 
And that's the same thing for the Alabama defense. They weren't able to get it dressed up. They weren't able to disguise the look they wanted to have because they were about to snap the football. You got to have a man over a man. You got to be in the coverage you want to be in because if you want to disguise it, you want to communicate, you want to figure out, hey, you line up here, hey, you line up here. Well, if we snap the football, there is that much more opportunity for you to be caught mid-conversation and us to be scoring a touchdown. Like th- that, that is kind of the reality of what Texas was able to force against Alabama. So all that's to say, Quinn Ewers had a simpler picture because of how quickly they went. Because you can't lie, you can't get dressed up if you're already late to get somewhere. And that was Alabama consistently on Saturday night in Tuscaloosa. And that's why, that's why Quinn Ewers was just diming them up for three and a half bills. Now the difference too for Steve Sarkeesian from this year to last year, they got better players, man. And I'm not just talking about matchups in this football game. Like I said, Bama had really good players too. But I mean, for Steve Sarkeesian, we've seen over the course of his career, when he's got the Jimmys and Joes, he's able to cook. When he has the ingredients, he makes the right product. And right now, with Xavier Worthy, with Jatavian Sanders, with Adonai Mitchell, with Quinn Ewers, with all they have back on the offensive line, like they have everything they need to execute to the nth degree. And with Steve Sarkeesian's scheme... It's great to create matchups. You can only capitalize on matchups if your players win. And so what I want to say with this whole situation, with the personnel they have now, with the depth that they have, they have a greater percentage chance to win their matchups. If Xavier Worthy doesn't win, well, guess what? We have another bona fide number one wide receiver in Adonai Mitchell on the outside, and he might win. And he won a lot this past Saturday. Jatavian Sanders, if you guys want to spread the entire defense to our freak show wide receivers, that's fine. But the middle of the field for Jatavian Sanders, probably going to be open. And Quinn Ewers can put the ball where it needs to be. Even when it's well defended, you can't defend a perfect pass. And Quinn Ewers, I think, has the ability to consistently deliver, I don't want to say perfect passes, but he puts the ball where it needs to go in the right spot. And we saw him do that a lot against Alabama. So we say it a lot now. I mean, the, the question for Texas is consistency. Can they do it against a team like a Kansas State? Can they do it against a team like a Baylor in a couple weeks? We'll see. That's going to be the, the issue for them. But there will be no tougher test than what they saw in Tuscaloosa, Alabama this past Saturday night. And to be real, with the talent they have, with the depth they have, with the preparation and the aggressive nature that Steve Sarkeesian brings to this offense, they should never lose the game because they got outscored. They should never have a situation where it's like, hey, where was, where was the offense tonight? Like last year against TCU, perfect example for Texas. Offense went missing. I don't think you see that from Texas this year. And if you do, there's probably more to that story and there's probably more baked into that situation. So for Texas, the scheme with Steve Sarkeesian, the players they have, they're going to be dangerous the rest of the way. And they're going to be a force for everybody else on their schedule. And they have a very, very direct path to playing for a Big 12 title and for playing for a college football playoff spot. They got to do it, but the path is very much so clear after getting a big time win in Tuscaloosa and the offense playing an enormous part in it. want to tell y'all a little bit about the good people at game time. Now, I want to kind of paint you this picture here. We got a lot of big time games in week four, a lot of big time games in week three too, but as we get ready for week four, probably time to start looking for tickets. You got Notre Dame, Ohio State, Florida State at Clemson. Like there's there's some matchups now, as there is in week three. But what I want us to all avoid is showing up and not having a ticket for the game. I'm telling you, don't, don't be that guy. Don't be that family that's that's without tickets. Game time's gonna take care of you. So game time is the fast, easy way to buy tickets for all the big time matchups. And for this college football season, that's who we're trusting. Game time is the place for last minute ticket deals. Forget planning months in advance. We can get right up to the Saturday of week four. Heck, you can get to the Saturday of week three. Get dialed in. Game time has deals on tickets and all of the events. Get exclusive flash deals on tickets on all the sports and entertainment events. The game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price if you find tickets in the same section and row for less. Game time will credit you 110% of that difference so snag tickets without the stress with game time download the game time app create an account here's the big part use code hard count for twenty dollars off your first purchase terms apply again create an account redeem code hard count for twenty dollars off use the game time app download game time today last minute tickets lowest price guaranteed 
Hey y'all, thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.